Hi, my name is Bob Tabor. I'm with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this video, things start to get a little bit more interesting. First off, I'm going to demonstrate how to accept input into the console window application from the user. Then based on that user's input, I'm going to write some logic to execute different blocks of code. I'll demonstrate a couple of different ways in C Sharp to accomplish just that. So let's start by creating a new project. File, New Project. In the New Project dialog, I want to make sure that on the left-hand side, Visual C Sharp is selected, Console Application is selected in the middle area. And I'm going to call this Decisions, and then click OK. All right, so again, what I want to do between the curly braces and the static void main is I want to type this code. Please follow along, pause, get your hands dirty, write this code along with me, okay? Pause, rewind if you need to. All right, so far, so good. This should all make perfect sense. Now watch this. We're going to set user value equal to console.readline. So this is kind of a hidden feature of the readline method. It will accept input from the user and then take whatever the user typed in after they hit the enter key on their keyboard, it'll save that value into a variable. All right, that's all that's going on here. And then we're going to use a second read line to stop the execution before ultimately exiting out so that we can actually see this uh, second write line. Let's run the application. So I'm going to type in Bob was here. You typed Bob was here, okay? So uh, again, a really silly example, but we hope to illustrate a couple of important things before we move on to decision statements. Uh, like I said, we previously used the console.readline to stop the execution of the Windows console application uh, so we can actually see the results before the application finishes, closes out the console window, and so on. However, as you can see from this key line of code in line 14, uh, that we can use this to retrieve the value that a user types into the console window. So then next, we merely concatenate the literal string you typed with whatever the value was that the user actually typed in and we print both of those back out to screen. So let's use this technique and add some logic to our application. So what I want to do is select everything you have right here and I'm going to use our comment out the selected lines button on our toolbar. So that will essentially negate all the work that we just did because we want to build a cooler application. So follow along please. All right, so far so good. We've seen these lines of code similar to what we've done up here. This time, however, I am declaring the variable and initializing it all in one line of code like we learned about in the previous video. Here's where it gets fun. Okay, so what's going on here? Here we're going to check to look at user value. If user value is one, so in, in other words, if the user hit the number one on their keyboard and then hit enter, then we will execute this block of code. Again, a block of code defined by opening and closing curly braces. And so inside of the curly braces, that block of code that gets executed will just simply print out, you want a new car, all right? And then it'll wait pause for the, uh, using the read line method that we learned about earlier, and then it will exit out. What if somebody types in something other than the number one? Well, then this block of code 
will not execute. This allows you to write logic within your applications. Now one other thing that I want to point out, and this is difficult for somebody who is just getting started, there is a difference between assignment and a check for equality. All right, so here we are assigning whatever the user typed in to this variable. That's an assignment. However, here we're checking whether this statement is true or false by using the double equal sign. So if user value is equal to the number one, so this is going to return either a true, yes, those do equal one another, or false, nope, the user typed in something different than the number one. So this again is a uh, an evaluation operator, all right? So let's move on. Well, first of all, let's run the application and see it work. So the first time I'm gonna just type in something on my keyboard and then hit return and the application just exit exits. That block of code did not actually uh, fire. So this time I'm gonna hit one on my keyboard and then hit enter and it says you want a new car, all right? So that is a decision state. We made a decision whether or not to display or to execute these lines of code using the if statement. So at this point, the problem is that we only handle one possible outcome with our if statement. If we do not enter that block of code, then the application is just free to exit by moving outside of the main methods block of code. So let's come back and edit our work here and add on some more options. By adding an else if user value equals two. Okay, before I actually run the application, a few things to take note of. We have, first of all, the if statement in line 20. In line 25, we have an else if. So if this isn't true, then see, is this true? If it is, then execute this block of code. Well, if that's not true, then is this next block of code true? Is this evaluation true? If so, then execute this block of code. And then finally, in line 35, we have an else statement, which says, well, if none of these were true, then go ahead and execute this block of code. All right, so let's see this in action. Let's run our application. First of all, let's type in number one. We see you want a new car. Okay, that part still works. Let's run the application again. Let's type in the number two. This time we see you want a new boat. Awesome. Let's start the application again. Type in the number three, and it says you want a new cat. All right, and so then this time I'm going to type in the number four or anything on my keyboard and I will get sorry we didn't understand you lose. All right, so that is the difference between the if, which is the initial check, the else if, and you can have as many of these as you need, and then finally, if you need some catch-all uh, logic, then you would use just the else statement by itself. So oftentimes, developers wanna write concise code, and this often improves readability by removing extraneous characters and things to mentally digest, okay? So developers have learned that if they find themselves writing the same code over and over again, that it's a good idea to take a closer look at the code and to do what's, uh, what's called refactor, to rewrite the code and to make it smaller, more condensed, and improve the quality of the code by applying some rules designed to improve its quality. Some of these refactorings even have names and there's books written about them, all right? But in this case, we can see that each uh, code block of our if statement has essentially the same commands. We have a console.writeline and a console.readline. We simply need to extract what is common 
between all of these passages and then focus on what's different in each of these blocks of code. So let's rewrite this code example. And what I'm gonna do is, first of all, create a variable called message. And then what I wanna do, and I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna hit Control X on my keyboard and move this to the very end. Furthermore, I'm gonna then set message equal to what we have here. So I'm gonna cut that out of the final right line because it really belongs back here. And I'm gonna repeat that message equals, and I can even highlight and then drag this to the previous line like so, and add a semicolon at the end. That's a pretty neat technique. And then I can just select these two lines and delete them. Well, let's do that again. Message equals, I'm gonna make sure to get everything inside the double quotation marks, including the double quotation marks, then I'm gonna drag and drop that code to the previous line and put a semicolon at the end. That's just another technique. You can also use the keyboard shortcuts like we did earlier. Finally, I'm gonna take the variable message and put it in our right line. So see how we're able to clean up the code significantly? I might even do this just to initialize it to an empty string to begin with. Let's rerun the application to make sure that it still works. Click two on the keyboard, hit enter, and it still seems to work. Awesome. Now I could even clean this up just a little bit more. Notice that we're still using curly braces. Now. If we have more than one line of code, we'll need to create a code block beneath each if and else if statement. However, if we only have one line of code that we need to execute, then we don't need a code block. We can do something like this. Just get rid of the code block and that should still work. And I'm gonna run the application and I can hit one still on my keyboard and hit enter and it will still function correctly. So if you need multiple lines like we did previously when we had both console.writeline, console.readline, then we don't need a code block. If we only need one line of code, we can put it immediately after the if or else if statements. All right, so let's go ahead and follow that convention and just delete off all of this and further compact our code. Now, if we ever add another line of code to any of these else if statements or if statements or the else sta statement, then we're going to need to add the curly braces back in. But again, we're just trying to condense our code here and it should still work. You can see another thing that I'm doing as I'm writing code, I'm continually writing a little bit of code and then executing it to make sure it works, writing a little bit and executing it. And that's something you'll probably want to uh, continue to do as you're learning, not write long passages and then hit the run button or the build button because uh, you won't have the sense of confidence in the code that you've just written. Keep things small and tidy, test them, and then move on, all right? And let me also suggest that you need to memorize this if, else if, else syntax, including the, uh, the evaluation operator, including the curly braces, when to use them, when not to. It's easy and you'll be using this so often that you're not gonna be able to look up on a cheat sheet or, or reference it in MSDN. You need to just internalize this and memorize this part of the syntax. All right, so let's move on because there's another way that we can write uh, essentially this same, uh, the same example. Let's comment out using the multi-line commenting syntax. Uh, if I just needed an either or comparison, so if I didn't need four different possibilities, I just needed two possibilities, I could do something a little bit different here and use what's called as the conditional operator. This goes back to writing concise code. If you only need uh, one situation or the other, not four or five, then this would work well for you. So let's go ahead and write a very condensed line of code here. In fact, let's go ahead and move this above this, so we're getting rid of this as well, okay? So string message equals user value equals one question mark boat 
colon strand of lint. Console.write line. And I'm going to change this up as well. Let me comment that out. Dot write line. U one A Okay, wow. It's quite a bit of code there. Um, I forgot to point something out with the if statement. Notice that whatever we're evaluating has to be surrounded in uh, open and close parentheses. Same as what we're doing right here. We're doing an evaluation. Did the, What did the user type in? If they typed in the number one, then assign message the value of boat. Otherwise, assign it strand of lint. Okay, so that's the conditional operator. Evaluate, if it's true, assign your variable to the first part or assign it to the second part if it's false, if this is false. Now in line 39, I'm doing something kind of neat as well. I'm formatting the string. So I could take a couple of different lines of code to do this exact same thing, but what I want to do is insert the value that we created in message. We want to insert it into the string, and the way we insert it is through the use of this, um, I guess you'd call it insertion syntax. Uh, so at position zero, so this is the first position. Now if I wanted a second position, I would go and put some other like user value, okay? And I could do, and you typed one. So this is zero based, meaning that the number start with zero, one, two, and I'm inserting the first variable here and the second variable here and so on. And I can do this as many variables off and format that string before I actually then print it out to, screen, to the screen. So let's run the application and this time, this time I'm gonna hit uh, the number three and hit re enter on my keyboard. You want a strand of lint and you typed three. Let's run it again. All right, so obviously the conditional operator is a little bit less flexible than the full-blown if statement. However, in some situations it really shines when you just need a simple either or situation. So another tool in your toolbox, all right? Uh, it's a great way to do an inline conditional check, especially the way that I've used it here to assign a value to a variable without having to write several lines of code. All right, so let's recap what we talked about in this lesson. The key idea from this lesson is how to write logic using two different C-sharp constructs. And there are, there are more to choose from as well. I just wanted to simplify this and keep it easy. First, you use the if statement to evaluate conditions and add to its utility by using the else if and then the else statements to account for additional scenarios that you need to handle within your code. And then secondly, we talked about the use of the conditional operator for simple scenarios like we just demonstrated. We also talked about formatting strings like we did here in this last line of code that we wrote. Now, as I alluded to just a moment ago, there's a third way to write conditional logic using the C-sharp switch statement, and we're going to cover that later in this series. So let's pick it up in the next video. We'll see you then. Thank you.